So today we're going to take a look at the steps needed to create a text file um, that's suitable for uh, Claude, Claude Needham, to upload it or use it to create the text that's going to go into the Akashic Library website. And he's given a link to his instructions on the Prosperity Path Forum. Uh, this is the 6th of December 2014 today. And in his posting, he has written a blog to indicate how you are to send in your chapters for the Parallel Life Survey in the form of a text file. So we're going to click on this link uh, to Claude's blog and that's going to call up the instructions. And the blog is titled PLS App Dash D E V Dev Goes On. Development goes on, I think. So if we scroll down, we'll see a series of instructions. It says, so here's the deal. Number one, send your chapters in a text file. And that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to look at, actually, well, we're going to look at how to create the text file. Um, the actual attaching of a text file and emailing, um, we'll have to address that separately. Uh, because everybody has different email programs. So if you have problems with that, you'll have to seek some help, possibly through the the uh, Prosperity Path forums, to get help on how to use your particular email program. So this is really the first step, is cre actually just creating the text file that we're going to look at today. So step two, we're told the name of the text file should be your your name, the name that you want to be known as, as an author. And there's a little bit of additional information below these steps. Actually, there's quite a bit. It says re request number two here. Um, the name should not be too long. So if your name is John Smith, you'd write the name. This is the name of the text file. It's, that's going to be the text file name is John Underline Smith. And we're not, not using a dash. It's actually an underline. Is You get it from hitting the key with the dashes while holding down the shift key. And it gives you what's called an underscore or a lower, lower dash, like an underline. So if you have a long name like mine, my surname is Hodgkinson, I'm going to shorten that just to capital H. So my file name, if we come back to these instructions, is going to be Jim underscore or underline capital H. So I know the name of my tech, my uh, uh, file name now. What I have to do now is to create that text file. So um, I'm using Windows, and I'm going to show you one way of opening up your notepad, which is the program you use to collect to um, create, I should say, your text file. So I'm going to do it by right-clicking, clicking with the right mouse button with my cursor on the desktop here. And I get this new window come up when I right-click. And I see the word new there. When I put my cursor on that word new, I get another little window. And I'm going to look down this, and there's the word text document and a symbol for a notepad. So I'm going to right-click that, and immediately I get this notepad icon with new text document highlighted in blue. Now, because it's highlighted, it means I can change that name. And I'm going to use my author name, which is Jim, J-I-M. And then I'm going to get the underscore by holding down the shift key, the key that gives you uppercase letters. And then while I'm holding that down, I'll press the key with the two dashes on it. And that gives me an underscore. And then I'll put a capital H there. So now that's done. And actually, if I double-click on this notepad icon now, 
it opens up the Notepad program, and I can see at the top it's t it's properly titled. File name is jm underscore h dot txt. Now, whatever you do, don't change that dot txt part. Um, just change the part that's to the left of the dot. That's all you can lawfully do there without changing the nature of that file. So now this Notepad program is ready to accept any text we either want to type into it or paste into it. And we're going to be doing some pasting. We're going to be doing copy and pasting because our existing um, text is or is in a different program and we want to uh, copy the data, the, the text, out of the the open uh, office document or the word document we want to copy out of that and paste into the notepad so we'll have to open up our word document or our open office document and let's say we want to copy uh, the first three chapters um, now I'm using word I'm assuming that open office is going to operate in a similar way. So whenever you're copying something, first of all you have to select what it is you want to copy. So I'm going to select a whole block of blocks of text by clicking with my left mouse button just before the capital C of chapter and then I'm going to keep that left mouse button down. I'm holding it down and then I'm going to move my mouse in a downward direction all the way down, 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 and it keeps scrolling the text up and it keeps selecting it. Now, once I'm at the point where I've got the text I want, I can just come back to the last word so that it's the, uh, the last thing selected and then let go with the left mouse button. So in this step, we've, we've selected the text we want to um, copy. Now, uh, what I usually do is there's a few ways you can do copy and pasting. Let's look at uh, one way here. If I click my right mouse button, it brings up a submenu here that has the words cut, copy, paste, does all these options. So I can now click on the copy from this menu I've got from clicking on the right mouse button and now it's copied all that text onto what's known as the clipboard in the computer so the computer has now temporarily memorized all that text that you've selected. Now we want to paste that so we come over to the notepad document and now we'll click once with the left mouse button to activate this notepad document now you see I've got a flashing cursor in the notepad document. Now I want to paste that text. So again, what I could do here is hold down the right mouse button, and again I get a menu, and but now I'll click Paste. And now it's pasted that text into my document. So it's probably a good idea at this point to save that if you click File at the top there and then you get this little menu, just click Save. And now you've saved that. And now uh, what we could do is clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to take out the lines of white space between the chapter and the text. I'm going to delete just put my cursor below chapter 1 and press delete once and it takes out that line and now I'm going to add a line of white space between my paragraphs so I can see where my paragraphs are because I have lines that are sentences that have ended mid page there so I'm just going to press the uh, return key once to create a new line each place I want to see that and below all this I see lots and lots of white, white space I'm just going to keep pressing the delete key 
to remove those excess lines until I've just got one um, line of white space and then the chapter, the next chapter heading. And so I'm just going to uh, continue to do this and this one looks okay. I'm just putting, oops, one line between each of my paragraphs and then I'm going to have one line. I'm using the delete key to take out the excess lines. If I go too far, I'm going to put another line in by pressing the return key. And here I'm going to delete one line of white space. And here I'm going to add one line of white space using the return key. And I think that looks okay. So this is, I'm not totally certain if this uh, is absolutely necessary to clean this up in this way. Um, it could just be my, my idiosyncrasy. If you have everything in a block, you can always try and see with Claude if, if that works fine as well and um, get some feedback from him. So anyway, that's, that's my take on this. There's my um, text file. I'm going to close my original document and I'm going to make sure I save this text file again. I'm going to click File and then Save and then close that program by hitting the red X. And then again, if I double click my notepad symbol, then I see the text as I've made the changes there. And I think that's ready to go. And again, I'll just, I can just close that. If I make any changes at this point, I, again, I'd want to click File and then Save. Then I can close it. So there we have it. There's a file ready to carry on with the next step of attaching it to an email and sending it to Claude. Okay, thanks for watching.